Hello, awesome possums. I'd like to read to you the story, Johnny Appleseed. It's a tall tale retold and illustrated by Stephen Kellogg. What is a tall tale? Well, it's a story that is very difficult to believe, and it's a story that is greatly exaggerated. There are five elements of a tall tale. The first element is that it usually is centered around a man who is very strong and is almost superhuman-like. A narrator is usually part of the story or who has witnessed the story. It has a very friendly tone and it has a folktale setting such as a small town or a village. A problem that affects everyone and its unbelievable details told with figurative language. Our target skill for this story will be figurative language, similes, and metaphors. A simile is a figure of speech that directly compares two different things. The simile is usually in a phrase that begins with the word as or like. This is different from a metaphor which is also a comparison, but one that says something is something else. Here are some examples of similes using as and like. Remember, a simile compares two things using the word as or like. All right, let's look at as big as an elephant. Okay, let's compare something to be as big as an elephant. How about that truck was as big as an elephant? So they're saying the truck is very big, like an elephant is big. All right, how about as brave as a lion? How about my father is as brave as a lion? So you're comparing your father's bravery to a lion's bravery, okay? How about as cold as ice? What could be as cold as ice? Oh, my pop, my soda was as cold as ice. We well, you know how cold ice is. I would be comparing how cold my ice is to my pop, okay? Let's look at the simile like. Sing like an angel. My sister, sings like an angel. So I'm comparing my sister's singing to that of an angel singing. Here's a good one. Eat like a bird. Um, my little sister eats like a bird. So you know a bird doesn't eat very much, right? So I would be comparing my little sister to be eating like a bird, which would be not eating very much. Here's some more similes that you can go through and you can look at and read. There are similes that um, are very common in the English language. Make sure that you stop the, the video so that you can read these at your own leisure. Let's look at, at another type of figurative language called metaphors. Remember, a simile compares using the word like or as, but metaphors says something is something else. So let's look at this first metaphor. It says, what are you, a chicken? So it's comparing or saying that you are a chicken, and you know you're not a chicken. Right, let's look at another one. She's a busy bee who always gets her work done. So they're comparing this person to a busy bee, saying that she is a busy bee. In number one, they're saying this person is a chicken. Let's look at um, people metaphor, and let's look at the first one. It says the science fair winner is a real Einstein. Well, Einstein was a genius. So they're saying that the science fair winner is Einstein, the genius. Let's look at this one. It says, thanks for helping me. You're a real saint. So they're comparing you and saying you are a saint. Okay, 
Those are some examples of metaphors. Make sure that you stop the video, pause it, so that you can read the rest of them at your leisure. Let's begin reading the story, Johnny Appleseed, a tall tale retold and illustrated by Stephen Kellogg. John Chapman, who later became known as Johnny Appleseed, was born on September 26, 1774, when the apples on the trees surrounding his home in Leominster, Massachusetts, were as red as the autumn leaves. John's first years were hard. His father left the family to fight in the Revolutionary War, and his mother and his baby brother both died before his second birthday. By the time John turned six, his father had remarried and settled in Longmeadow, Massachusetts. Within a decade, their little house was overflowing with 10 more children. Nearby was an apple orchard. Like most early American families, the Chapmans picked their apples in the fall, stored them in the cellars for the winter eating, and used them to make sauces, cider, vinegar, and apple butter. John loved to watch the spring blossoms slowly turn into the glowing fruit of autumn. Watching the apples grow inspired John to love all of nature. He often escaped from his boisterous household to the tranquil woods. The animals sensed his gentleness and trusted him. As soon as John was old enough to leave home, he set out to explore the vast wilderness to, to the west. When he reached the Allegheny Mountains, he cleared a plot of land and planted a small orchard with the pouch of apple seeds he had carried with him. John walked hundreds of miles through the Pennsylvania forest, living like the Indians he befriended on the trail. As he traveled, he cleared the land for many more orchards. He was sure the pioneer families would be arriving before long, and he looked forward to supplying them with apple trees. When a storm struck, he found shelter in a hollow log or built a lean-to. On clear nights, he stretched out under the stars. Over the next few years, John continued to visit and care for his new orchards. The winter slowed him down, but he survived happily on a diet of butternuts. One spring, he met a band of men who boasted that they could lick their weight in wildcats. They were amazed to hear that John wouldn't hurt an animal and had no use for a gun. They challenged John to compete at wrestling, the frontier favorite sport. He suggested a more practical contest, a tree chopping match. The woodsman eagerly agreed. When the sawdust settled, there was no question about who had come out on top. John was pleased that the land for his largest orchard had been so quickly cleared. He thanked the exhausted woodsmen for their help and began planting. During the next few years, John continued to move westward. Whenever he ran out of apple seeds, he hiked to the eastern cider presses to replenish his supply. Before long, John's plantings were spread across the state of Ohio. Meanwhile, pioneer families were arriving in search of home sites and farmland. John had located his orchards on the routes he thought they'd be traveling. As he had hoped, the settlers were eager to buy his young trees.
John went out of his way to lend a helping hand to his new neighbors. Often he would give his trees away. People affectionately called him Johnny Appleseed, and he began using that name. He particularly enjoyed entertaining children with tales of his wilderness adventures and stories from the Bible. In 1812, the British incited the Indians to join them in another war against the Americans. The settlers feared that Ohio would be invaded from Lake Erie. It grieved Johnny that his friends were fighting each other, but when he saw the smoke of burning cabins, he ran through the night shouting a warning at every door. After the war, people urged Johnny to build a house and settle down. He replied that he lived like a king in his wilderness home, and he returned to the forest he loved. During his long absences, folks enjoyed sharing the recollections of Johnny. They retold his stories, and sometimes they even exaggerated them a bit. Some recalled Johnny sleeping in a treetop hammock and chattering with the birds. Others remembered that a rattlesnake had attacked his foot. Fortunately, Johnny's feet were as tough as elephant hide, so the fangs didn't penetrate. It was said that Johnny had once tended a wounded wolf and then kept him for a pet. As an old hunter swore, he'd seen Johnny frolicking with the bear family. The storytellers outdid each other with the tall tales about his feats of survival in the untamed wilderness. As years passed, Ohio became too crowded for Johnny. He moved to the wilds of Indiana, where he continued to clear land for his orchards. When the settlers began arriving, Johnny recognized some of the children who had listened to his stories. Now they had children of their own. It made Johnny's old heart glad when they welcomed him as a beloved friend and asked to hear his tales again. When Johnny passed 70, it became difficult for him to keep up his work. Then in March of 1845, while trudging through a snowstorm near Fort Wayne, Indiana, he became ill for the first time in his life. Johnny asked for shelter in a settler's cabin and a few days later, he died there. Curiously, Johnny's stories continued to move westward without him. Folks maintained that they'd seen him in Illinois or that he greeted them in Missouri, Arkansas, or Texas. Others were certain that he planted trees on the slopes of the Rocky Mountains or in California's distant valleys. Even today, people still claim they've seen Johnny Appleseed. Well, here's a little history lesson on Johnny Appleseed's orchards. It says, even though most fruit trees have a lifespan of only 15 to 45 years, there is a last known survivor of Johnny Appleseed's reign. This ancient apple tree lives on a farm in Nova, Ohio, where Johnny Appleseed is to believe to have planted an entire orchard of Rambo apple trees in 1830. And indeed, this tree still produces fruit. The tree is 150 years old. You can see, boys and girls, that part of the trunk of the tree died, but out of the ground has sprouted a new part of the tree.
All right, let's get back to our target skill of figurative language. Um, and let's talk about similes because there were three very obvious similes in the story that I want to discuss with you. Let's read this. It says, John Chapman, let me put this up here. John Chapman, who later became known as Johnny Appleseed, was born on September 26, 1774, when the, when the apples on the trees surrounding his home in Leominster, Massachusetts, were as red as autumn leaves. Let me underline that. They were as red as autumn leaves. What was as red as the autumn leaves, boys and girls? The apples on the tree were as red as the autumn leaves. There's one simile. All right, here we go. After the war, people urged Johnny to build a house and settle down. He replied that he lived like a king in his wilderness and he returned to the forest he loved okay remember some of these use the words like and as so he lived like a king in his wilderness home who was like a king he was johnny appleseed so johnny lived like a king there's your simile comparing johnny to a king. It's not saying he is a king. It's saying he is like a king. All right, let's look at the last one. Other members, uh, others remembered that a rattlesnake had attacked his foot. Fortunately, Johnny's feet were as tough as elephants hide, so the fangs didn't penetrate. Okay, here we go. As tough as elephants hide. What were as tough as an elephant's hide? Johnny's feet were as tough as an elephant's hide. And there is your simile. That's the end of our lesson today, awesome possums. I hope you enjoyed the story. Please like this video and subscribe to my channel. Remember, new lessons are posted weekly. Work on your growth mindset and remember, all things are difficult before they get easy. Have a great day, and I hope to hear, see you back here soon. Bye-bye.